am Dr. Rupesh and on behalf of IAPSM eConnect I am uh, proud to present to you the first of a series of videos which we are conducting on nutrition now the focus of the videos will be a very basic level for starters and if you feel that you want more details you can always write in the comments and we will come up with a detailed video which will explain specifics regarding nutritional assessment and uh, related topics so for this video i will be describing the evolution of dietary guidelines over time and i will be followed by dr priti solanki madam will describe the general guidelines of nutrition and the last part will be covered by dr vasim ansari who will discuss the dietary guidelines in special situations so with that i will start by sharing my screen so i will be covering a brief history of dietary guidelines and tell you how the dietary guidelines have evolved over time now the basic idea of uh, providing dietary guidelines is the notion that an ideal diet is one that promotes uh, healthy longevity low morbidity prevents diseases which are caused by either deficiency or excess of specific nutrients and is composed of foods that are safe available and palatable and one can imagine that over time our notion of uh, what is uh, healthy food and what certain food beliefs we may have have influenced the dietary guidelines so if you look at the ancient times hippocrates around 400 bce first stated that a person must consume a frugal diet of fish bread fruits and vegetables by the time galen came on the scene around 170 bce he said that the best foods to prevent disease are vegetables fish and lean meat of small animals this largely remained unchanged until the 19th century where there was an incident in britain where certain prisoners ended up uh, unhealthy and dying so this controversy over feeding prisoners in jails forced the british government to first investigate the link between diet and health in 1842 a german scientist called justus von liebig stated that protein is the only true nutrient and his proclamation was considered to be true so on the assumption that protein is the main in nutrient that is required a lot of the dietary advice for general public was focused on providing the cheapest means of meeting energy and protein requirements this continued till the advent of uh, world war 1 and in 1902 uh, there was a realization in britain that a lot of the military volunteers in fact about 60% of the military volunteers for the boer war which they were uh, fighting in south africa uh, the volunteers were stunted they had deformities had inadequate weight and poor eyesight because of which they could not be conscripted into the army therefore there was another discussion in britain regarding the nutritional status of the general public and poor nutrition then became a social problem in 1901 Frederick Gowland Hopkins said that humans cannot live by fat protein and carbohydrate alone this was on the basis of several studies which he had conducted on animals so these animal feeding studies were conducted with feeding diets and he was also the person who identified the amino acid tryptophan so what he said held considerable weight during the time of world war 1 the state had assumed responsibility for purity and safety of food nutritional surveillance of children and also had discretion to supplement the diet of at least one vulnerable group and by 1916 united states department of agriculture developed a food guide based on five food groups once the war was over in 1918 the british royal society appointed a food committee to report on food requirements of humans 
and this committee made specific recommendations regarding what they thought was optimum their recommendations included 3000 kilocalories per day with 70 to 80 grams of protein per day and not less than 25% of fat so fat was not considered to be a bad thing in the interwar period between world war 1 and world war 2 we had the league of nations and the league of nations health commission actually conducted lots of studies on nutrition during this period in 1936 the league of nations health commission recommended that adults consume 2400 kilocalories and 1 gram of protein per kg body weight on a daily basis some more studies later the league of nations technical committee in 1938 published a report which first described the concept of protective foods and it elaborated on this idea a little more in the report between 1939 to 1944 britain which was uh, on a different level with respect to the studies regarding nutrition it prepared and implemented a national nutrition policy and the idea here was to maintain and improve the nutritional value of british diet you might recall that 1939 to 1945 also coincided with the period of world war 2 and there were several restrictions on food so the food restrictions enabled the british government to implement the national nutrition policy in letter and spirit what they found was that the nutrition policy resulted in the lowest rates of maternal and child mortality and general nutritional condition of the public improved considerably however once the war ended people were free to eat whatever they wanted and then nutritional inequalities returned about the same time in 1941 the us scientists first published the concept of recommended dietary allowance or rda and thereafter rdas were revised every 5 to 10 years in the period between 1944 to 1954 several countries and the who food and agriculture organization uh, they were influenced by the first set of rdas which were developed and these agencies and countries developed their own dietary standards by 1954 for a long time in between 1954 to early 1980s there were a lot of discussions on nutrition but unfortunately people were unable to agree on even the most basic of things finally in 1983 the national advisory committee on nutritional education or nac ne published a landmark report which described links between diet and various health conditions and diseases it was the first to provide quantitative dietary targets to prevent lifestyle diseases the same uh thing was taken forward in 1984 by the committee on medical aspects of food policy or coma and largely this report published in 84 agreed with the nacna report on reducing fat in diet in 1989 coma published guidelines to reduce the amount of sugary foods to prevent dental caries and in 91 it released a report that introduced dietary reference values which served as the basis for several subsequent guidelines in the uk as far as india is concerned we have largely been following the global trends in 2020 the national institute of nutrition published a report that introduced estimated average requirement or ear in addition to rta so the estimated average requirement is intended to be used to evaluate population and nutrition requirements while rdas will continue to be used to set safe nutritional intake for individuals so this is a brief overview of the evolution of new dietary guidelines over time and i will request dr preeti to continue uh, hello everyone i am dr preeti from solanki and uh, uh, i am an assistant professor in community medicine at gmrs medical college walsad gujarat and as dr rupesh has already said i'll be discussing the general guidelines on nutrition now food plays an important role in health as well as in disease consuming healthy diet throughout the life it ensures uh, prevention of malnutrition along with a range of many non communicable diseases 
uh, however the uh, dietary pattern it has changed all over the world due to increased production of uh, processed food industrialization and uh, changing lifestyle so consuming a healthy diet and inculcating it as a routine habit it has become uh, a necessity and the exact composition or structure of this uh, healthy diet it varies from individual to individual based on certain factors such as uh, age gender level of physical activity cultural preferences uh, local availability of different food items and so on nonetheless the principles of uh, nutrition they remain same all over uh, for example take energy your energy intake and your energy expenditure they should balance each other out if uh, one wishes to avoid unhealthy weight gain uh, once we say weight gain uh, the nutrient that flashes in everyone's mind is fat uh, guidelines say that fat intake uh, per day it should it should not exceed 30% of your total energy intake and in fat there are different types right there are unsaturated fats there are saturated fats and trans fats so as per guideline uh, saturated fat intake should not exceed 10% and trans fat intake should not exceed 1% of your total energy intake uh, and for healthy diet one should be consuming more unsaturated fats as compared to saturated and trans fat so for that one needs to know which are the food items which are rich in different types of fats right uh, i will give you some examples of each type of fat uh, unsaturated fat is present more in uh, fish nuts uh, vegetable oils like sunflower oil sea flower oil canola oil soya bean oil olive oil and so on saturated fat is present more in uh, uh, butter cream cheese uh, fatty meat um, and palm oil coconut oil and trans fats they are mainly present in the uh, pre packaged processed foods like your frozen pizza uh, wafers biscuits cookies and uh, fried and baked goods like uh, your pies and uh, donuts so for healthy life or healthy diet such uh, trans fat rich food items and saturated food rich items should be minimized in daily intake uh, after fat the another major nutrient of our diet is carbohydrate uh, carbohydrate are of two types simple carbs and complex carbs simple carbohydrates are in the form of uh, glucose and fructose which are mainly present in fruits honey uh, simple sugar and complex carbohydrates are present mainly in the cereals pulses um, root vegetables and uh, guidelines say that you should be consuming more complex carbohydrates as compared to the simple ones specifically those complex carbohydrates which are rich in dietary fibers and as per the recent guidelines of icmr the daily uh, dietary fiber intake it should be minimum 30 grams per 2000 uh, kilocalorie which is uh, marked as a safe intake and uh, the carbohydrate intake it should be minimum of 100 to 130 grams per day uh, for ages one year and above uh, this is the minimum requirement per day for optimum uh, brain glucose utilization Uh, after fat and carbohydrate third uh, nutrient which is uh, required by our body is protein protein requirement varies with age and as for the special requirement during certain uh, periods of life but as per the guideline uh, the average protein requirement by an adult individual adult indian individual is 0.83 grams per kg per day and the protein requirement is, is satisfied through the animal sources and plant sources and generally the animal proteins are considered uh, better because they contain all the essential amino acids so they are also called as complete protein but plant protein can also be combined if we combine different food groups we can get complete protein uh, for example you can combine cereals and pulses and their amino acids will complement each other and they will form a complete protein it is also known as a supplement reaction of protein and uh, the, the recent guideline of icmr it has revised the cereals to legumes to milk composition ratio to 3 is to 1 is to 2.5 which was previously 11 is to 1 is to 3 uh, so that was about the major in the, uh, nutrients of uh, our diet fat protein and carbohydrate now i will talk in very brief about the two food ingredients uh, which the nutritionists all over the world are focusing on in context of non communicable diseases which are sugar and salt let's talk about sugar first uh, the daily intake of pre sugar 
should be uh, should not exceed 10% of your total energy intake uh, and if you want even more health health benefit then it should be restricted to 5% of total energy intake now how much exactly is the 10% uh, sugar free sugar uh, constitutes so i will explain you with an example if uh, an adult person is consuming 2000 calories per day as a part of his healthy diet then 10% of sugar will, will come to around 12 teaspoonful of sugar free sugar so to restrict the so, uh, sugar intake in your routine life uh, you should be concentrating more on the food items which are rich in sugar and limit its intake uh, mainly the food items which are rich in sugar are sugary snacks then candies and mainly the beverages which are sugar loaded like your uh, energy drinks your flavored milk ready to drink tea ready to drink coffee your carbonated drinks they are rich in sugar and their intake should be uh, minimum for healthy diet and salt intake it should not exceed 5 grams per day uh, because uh, increased salt intake has been associated with increased risk of uh, cardiovascular diseases and uh, hypertension and stroke so to reduce salt intake one should limit the amount of salt that is being added in uh, while cooking and preparing the food and also we should be limiting the uh, food items which are having high sodium content such as uh, soy sauce fish sauce pickle pickle is also rich in salt so such food items should be limited in daily uh, routine intake of diet and lastly as per the guideline i would like to say that add variety of food groups in your diet because variety is not only uh, spice of life but it is also an essentiality from nutritional point of view so that was something about uh, healthy diet some basic aspects of healthy diet uh, but consumption of healthy diet becomes a little challenging during certain specific uh, periods of life due to uh, the presence of dietary taboos uh these dietary taboos are something that is ingrained in every culture very deeply and they are responsible for restriction of uh, certain food items during specific vulnerable period of life such as during pregnancy uh, and postnatal period concept of hot and cold food that is also um, uh, very much well known to every society and practiced all over the country the food items which are considered hot they are not allowed to be consumed by the pregnant woman during uh, pregnancy like uh, um, jaggery example so jag- uh, papaya jaggery meat eggs uh, dates uh, the pregnant woman is not allowed to consume these food items so they are very nutritious then uh, these beliefs are interlinked with uh, maternal health and in turn it is linked with the nutrition of the baby uh, some communities believe that uh, women should not consume uh, very dark colored uh, fruits and vegetables because if uh, she consumes it the baby's complexion would be dark in tribal communities still it is believed that uh, uh, women should restrict her diet during pregnancy because if she consumes more diet the baby would grow bigger and uh, she will have some problems during labor and pregnant women also believe this and they follow this out of fear that if they don't follow this it may lead to some complication during pregnancy or during labor the baby might have some deformities so uh, while uh, dealing or addressing these uh, dietary taboos one needs to take a balanced approach because there is cultural sensitivity attached with this topic and at the same time the uh, attempt should be made to raise awareness regarding the dietary taboos to ensure optimum nutrition of a mother and the baby So with this, I am concluding, and I am requesting Dr. Vasi to go forward with his uh, topic. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Vasi Bansari, Assistant Professor of Community Medicine at ESIC Medical College and Hospital Gulbarga, Karnataka. And I will be taking the discussion further uh, from where Dr. Rupesh and Dr. Preeti had uh, just finished. So in this session. i will be discussing on the dietary aspects in the certain age groups that is the pregnant woman the infant and the child nutrition so this shall be the overview of my session so we'll be going ahead with the importance of diet in different stages of life the first 1000 days of nutrition exclusive breastfeeding for infants up to 6 months why should we continue breastfeeding up to 2 years and what are the supplementary and complementary food guidelines for infants more than 6 months 
So let us have a beautiful look at the diagram given by the manual by National Institute of Nutrition regarding the importance of diet during different stages of life. As we begin at the toddler stage, where the primary function of nutrition is the growth and appropriate milestones achievement. So here, the basic nutrition which is acquired is from the breast milk, the energy rich foods like fats and sugar, and the function changes as you see from different stages of life. So when it reaches the stage of toddler and school going child, the basic function of nutrition is for growth and development of milestones also to fight infections. Here, the majority of the nutrient which constitutes the diet of the baby is from energy rich bodybuilding and protective foods that is from milk, vegetables and fruits. When the baby grows into a teenage and uh, the, in the teenage, the basic function of nutrition ranges from growth spurt, maturation and bone development. This is basically found by the bodybuilding and protective food materials. In the adulthood, the basic function uh, which is acquired from the nutrition is for not only maintaining health, but productivity and prevention of diet related diseases and also to support pregnancy and lactating in reproductive age group women. So this is acquired through the nutritionally adequate diet with extra food for child bearing and child bearing. And lastly, in the geriatric age group, the basic function of the nutrition is to be physically active and healthy and this is acquired from dense low fat foods moving ahead the basic development which takes place in important stages of life so uh, the first thousand days of nutrition has got a great to de uh, deal with the child's development of the brain so the time this time is both tremendously potential and enormously vulnerable and this is basically divided into three important stages the pregnancy the infancy and the toddlerhood so the stages of baby brain development usually occurs in the first thousand days of nutrition and the baby development uh, i don't mean only after the birth but including the period of pregnancy so the brain development begins very early on in pregnancy and the neural tube develops as early as 16 days after conception so the basic nutrients which play a great amount of role here are iron protein, zinc, folate, and iodine and certain fats. By seven months in pregnancy, a child's brain takes the shape of the adult brain. In infancy, the primary functions of brain development is balance, coordination, and postural development. Now to acquire this function, breast milk is considered to be a superfood. And uh, this breast milk plays a great amount of role in infancy as we also have a role of exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months of life. Whereas in the toddlerhood, basic function of brain development is to grow and develop at a rapid pace. Now in toddlerhood, we need to emphasize on the presence of protein rich, iron rich, zinc and iodine rich food. Whereas iron's significant role in brain development cannot be ignored in the first thousand days ranging from pregnancy to toddlerhood. Because the iron deficiency of uh, anemia, if acquired in pregnancy, is irreversible and it is very difficult to deal with. Considering with the first thousand days of nutrition, let us move ahead to the exclusive breastfeeding, which is given to infants up to six months of age. Now, why breastfeeding is considered to be given exclusively for the six months of age? It is because the most natural uh, and perfect food available for the normal growth of healthy development of infants. Also, because of its enrichment in the antibodies and anti-infective factors, the breast milk is naturally available. Breast milk also reduces the risk of infections. It helps to develop an emotional attachment with the mother. And last but not least, breastfe breastfeeding is associated with reduced amount of infections in the mother and also helps with better cognitive development of the baby. Apart from the exclusive breastfeeding, why do we have to promote breastfeeding even after six months. Now, breastfeeding is said to be continued to as long as possible, even up to two years. Of course, with the complementary starting of fruit, that is weaning. Now, breastfeeding can be continued in maintaining lactation and why breastfeeding is very important. Uh, if the babies are quiet or sleeping adequately after two hours of feeding, it means the breastfeeding has been adequate and breastfeeding infants do not need additional intake of water. What happens if we give water or other liquids to breastfed infants? 
the feeding water reduces the breast milk intake and it also increases the risk of infection coming to the last aspect of today's session that is the introduction of complementary foods after 6 months of life the introduction of complementary or supplementary foods is the process of weaning has to be started gradually but without the withdrawal of breastfeeding now breast milk is not adequate for the infants beyond 6 months of life this introduction of food supplements should be done gradually with the liquid foods and then continued with semi solid followed by the solid food at the age of 1 year the baby should be able to eat from the adult's plate so there should be no hesitancy or inhibition in introducing the complementary foods after 6 months of life however to emphasize again without the withdrawal of breastfeeding now also to emphasize on one important aspect there should be hygienic practices which should be encouraged during the introduction of weaning or the complementary feeding because if the hygiene is not taken care of it might lead to malnutrition it might lead to diarrhea and lot of other complications which might also lead up to protein allergy malnutrition so that's it for today's thank you everyone to, for listening to the session as we have already mentioned by dr rupesh this session was basically aimed for the comprehensive outlook on sensitizing the topic on nutrition if you require any specific details or you require for the further videos kindly mention in the comment section and subscribe to our channels thank you everyone